What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com. And in this video, we're going to explain MMM, Marketing Mix Modeling, and why you really need it given all the privacy issues that we have, especially when it comes to app marketing. And to explain it all, he prepared a fancy little deck for us, is Roy Nam. He is the CEO of AirBridge. Go check him out. It is airbridge.io if you need an MMP. That's Mobile Measurement Partner. Roy, welcome to the stream. Hi, Steve. Thanks for inviting me today. All right, Roy. I'll follow your lead. So you prepared a document for us. Let's go through this presentation. Explain to us MMM. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So marketing mixed modeling, as you, as you said, is definitely one of the rising technologies that you should keep in mind. And especially this technology is needed in, in the age of privacy. So we all know that iOS 14.5 and ATT is causing a lot of visibility issues in terms of digital marketing. And in order for you to actually recover this visibility to better understand what's happening to your app marketing, you would definitely need to consider MMM as one of your useful tools in the future. So I wanna actually just briefly talk about what MMM is and why is it important and how as a smaller application, you can utilize this technology to have a better visibility into your marketing performance. So can we go to the next slide? So just a little bit of background, why Triple M MMM came into the marketing picture? So definitely because of two reasons. So first of all, limitations of the last touchpoint model. So we all know that many ad marketer has been relying on this attribution model called last touchpoint model, which gives 100% credit to the last touchpoint on the user journey. However, there's some limitations to this last touchpoint model. Like for example, it's enabled to accurately measure the true effectiveness of advertising. This means uh, you cannot measure the incrementality. And also it does not take multiple touch points in a user journey into account. And lastly, uh, it's a pretty simplistic methodology, which gives 100% attribution credit to the single last touch point rather than distributing to the multiple touch point on the user journey. So what we should do about it is we need to recognize the touch points that have actually impacted the conversion, not just a single conversion, but across multiple, um, touch points on the user journey. And second uh, reason why we would need MMM is because of the privacy change. So we all know that IS 14.5 and ATT had a huge impact across the industry. And many of us have felt it strongly because it actually kind of distorted the numbers that we are seeing on the, on the dashboard of the MMP or on the ad platforms many of these numbers has been impacted. And not only just that, we also have a lot of these browsers implementing new policies to decay third-party cookies. For example, we do have uh, intelligent tracking prevention in Safari. We do have a similar one in Chrome or in Firefox. And there are also a lot of these regulations coming out to the market like GDPR, CCPA, and even more so in the future. So we need to measure the contribution of advertisements without using individual level without using user level granular data set. So then it comes MMM as a, as a very reliable alternative uh, to overcome some of these limitations that I have just shared with you. There are actually four characteristics of MMM. And before that, I want to just briefly explain to you what MMM is. Marketing mix modeling is a statistical analysis method that evaluates the impact of individual marketing variables and performance by analyzing the correlation between these variables and uh, performances. So it's pretty complicated, but if you see the picture, yes. uh, it clearly explains what it is. So basically you, you have all kinds of marketing variables. For example, you're spending your budget on channel A, channel B, and channel C. So each day, each one of these channels will have the ad spend. For example, like on day one, you're spending 1000 USD to channel A. 2,000 USD to channel B and 3,000 USD to channel C. And also we will have some external variables like seasonality or stock price index, some of these external market variables that you want to take into account. So you actually list up all of these variables, like is today holiday? Yes, no. If it's Christmas, yes. If it's not Christmas, no. Simple. And maybe mm -hmm. um, up and downs of these, you know, FX, up and downs of the market conditions, and also you would have to put in some of the marketing related inputs like ad spend for each channel on a daily basis. And if you have all these marketing variables on one hand, if you do have some of the outcome, 
for example, the number of installs per day, the total revenue per day. If you do have this uh, two inputs, two types of inputs, marketing variables and performances, actually MMM models are usually based on machine learning, such as regression or some kind of statistical methodology like Bayesian models. So you don't have to understand all about this, but just make sure that making sure that this is based on machine learning or statistical methodology. So by leveraging whichever um, ML or statistical methodology, they will actually find out the correlation between these variables and the performances. And by doing that, eventually they learn the increase and decrease in performance caused by changes in the marketing variables and estimate and predict the actual impact of each individual variable on performance. So this is a very rough picture of how it actually works. Why does it matter? Uh, why does it matter for applications and the marketers? Because of four reasons. So I won't actually dive in to one of these reasons, um, each one of them. So the first reason why you have to take this into account is because it utilizes aggregated data, not mm -hmm. user level data. Mm -hmm. So this is really important because when we think of the current status quo, many of these MMPs or many of these uh, measurement solutions actually leverage advertising ID as a major matching key in terms of uh, connecting the conversions and the touch points. So basically, if you, if you do have ad ID, you know who watched the ad, you know who bought the product at the end of the day inside your application who actually subscribed to your app. But without this ad ID, you kind of lost the matching key between the conversions and the touch points, which kind of misleads um, you into a very, maybe a little bit inaccurate um, user journey. What you might have observed is, is, a, is a clear decrease of organic install, the clear, clear increase of organic install. Because if you cannot actually build the complete user journey you would not be able to run the attribution. And that is causing a lot of issues. Utilizing aggregated data, not user level data, that would be the first benefit. Second, evaluates digital and non-digital media holistically. Third, accounts for ad carryover and saturation effects. And the fourth one would be, it provides predictive and prescriptive insights, not just the retrospective uh, insight into the marketing performance. Roy, if I can take a break real quick, it all, it's almost like, like, hey, we ha we're taking a holistic view on the entire marketing channel and the marketing mix because, you know, I had one developer say to me, look, I know I'm spending money unprofitably or this channel is super high in terms of conversion, but I know that it also helps out the overall marketing mix, right? And so it's not just being like, and for the longest time, I used to work for a bigger company, walmart.com. We used to run these TV ads. We used to run podcast ads. And it's hard to track these, these ads because people are probably just searching for better help or any other app, you name it. But MMM is starting to take that into consideration and being like, yes, you know, if we're just doing these digital ad media placements, this may be a super high cost per install, but it actually does impact our ASA campaigns, our Facebook ad campaigns and all that jazz. So in a nutshell, it feels like that's what MMM is trying to do. Yes, you're right, Steve. It's it's actually one of the most classic questions that any, that any marketer would ask. Um, it's actually taking a multi-touch uh, perspective. Yeah. Basically, you mentioned, as you mentioned, there's some a lot of these brand advertisements like CTV, linear TVs, or maybe you would run a lot of these video campaigns. Eventually, all of these middle touch points contribute to the end conversion. However, under last touch point model, they will give the credit to the you know the single last touch point, which doesn't make sense for all of these middle touch points to also play their part. How to really accurately measure all these middle touch points is one of the major missions that we always want to overcome. And I can tell you that MMM can certainly do that as well. Yeah, just. Uh, each one of these slides kind of highlights what I just what I just summarized. It's a well suited for post privacy era because it only uses aggregated data, not individual user level info. Especially, this is a good news for iOS uh, and marketers. Uh, we all know that opt in rate for advertising ID is actually dropped to around twenty percent that range, and because of that, the matching rate between the conversion and the touch point has dropped dramatically as well, which is causing the issues in terms of visibility into the marketing performances. So basically, because it only uses aggregated data, I would say it's very ATT friendly solution. So even without having to collect all of these advertising IDs or user level raw data, you would be able to run the analysis and that would be the, the biggest benefit that you will get from using MMM. And the second one, because it uses aggregated data, you don't have to 
uh, worry about collecting all of these individual touch points from non-digital media like podcast or linear TV, CTVs, that would be, I would say, the second uh, benefit of using MMM. The third one is actually, um, can, can we actually move on to the second, the next slide, please? Yeah, so that was just one that I just mentioned about digital and non-digital media, the coverage. The next slide, please. And also, there's two kinds of effects that you might want to consider. One is carryover effect and saturation effect, the other one. So carryover effect, in other words, is a long-term influence of the advertisements over the time being. So basically, day one, it would have the strongest effect. And day, it would have the decreased effect. And we want to actually take this into account. And saturation effect is if you eat one ice cream, you're happy. If you had 100 ice creams, you're unhappy. So basically, the marginal utility you would get uh, from each ad uh, would decrease over time. So we want to actually also take this effect into account. MMM actually take these two effects into account so much naturally because it's based on statistical methodology. And that's another benefit you will get from MMM. So maybe the last uh, side about MMM is it's about prediction. Uh, so many of these measurement solutions have been focused on bringing you to the retrospective uh, insights rather than something that would happen in the future. Because it's based on machine learning and statistical methodology, at some part, it will it can actually run simulations and tell you what to do next as a next step. Uh, of course, you cannot really rely upon this insight 100%, but certainly actually act as a good advisor in you double checking what you will do next that you have in mind. These are the four benefits of MMM. And maybe the last slide. So why do you have to care? Uh, again, as a small application or as an app builder, the biggest challenge you may face under iOS 14.5 and ATT is building a unit economics that allows you to scale your marketing operations effectively. So you've been measuring CPI, you've been measuring CPA. If you want to acquire 5,000 users uh, with, um, with 5,000 USD, you have to make sure that CPI is always below one USD. But if you don't know this, yep. you can't just be so much confident in spending more money on each campaign or creative, and that is causing a lot of issues. So why marketing mixed modeling at the end of the day would be useful for you is because it can be available tool for small apps or app publishers looking to overcome this visibility loss under IS 14.5 and ATT. So Arabic, a little bit about us. Uh, we are a unified measurement mm -hmm. stack, a mobile measurement partner. Uh, helping brands and marketers optimize their media mix and media spend. If you want to reach out to Nam, you can do that. His email is pretty easy. Nam, Nam at airbridge.io. Hey, Nam, one of the things I wanted to also talk to you about is it looks like MMN, like with OpenAI and ChatGPT coming into play, it sort of like takes into consideration all the different marketing channels. Like, hey, are you running these channels? Like, for example, Facebook or podcast advertising. Do we have to tell Airbridge that this is like, how do you know that I'm running podcast advertising, for example? We don't know until you tell us. The easiest way you can tell us is actually giving us the data. So for example, mm -hmm. to run the MMM model, you can actually let us know daily spend for that podcast. So maybe you're spending like $200 each day, or maybe you increased this 300 or 400 yesterday. You actually share with us this data set and we will know and we can run the model based of that. And it's just using some sophisticated machine learning type of thing that says, hey, we know podcasts and the effectiveness of podcasts and TV versus like maybe a Facebook impression. And you guys have the modeling and the predictions underneath that. Like, hey, maybe because of all the data that you're running within Airbridge, you know that maybe podcast or Facebook ad impressions are impacting and let's just, for example, organic download or an Apple search ads download. Hey, look, if you want to look cool when you're in an app event, just throw out MMM. It's going to be the trendy term in 2023, I believe. And that's why I wanted to talk to Roy and bring him on to really explain it for us because I've been hearing a lot about it. And for me, this is a learning platform as well. Roy, anything I missed that you want to make sure we cover? about MMM? No, I think we have covered most of the topics, Steve. It seems like the trend and it seems like the way to go. And again, look at your ad spend, all your marketing channels at a holistic level and MMM or use a tool like Airbridge where they're going to do all that fancy calculation and machine learning. So once again, it is airbridge.io and I'm going to up their website one more time. So airbridge.io, go check them out. And it is linked up on your favorite podcast app or in the YouTube description. Nam? I mean, Nam. Roy, thank you so much. What do you prefer, Roy or Nam? Roy. <laughs> you can call me Nam, but yeah, Roy's better for me. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next video.